Okay, I'm in the laboratory today and we are building paper pots. I need 2,000 paper pots for my um, garden outside. They don't have to be paper, but I do need uh, pots for outside. So, and we could purchase pots. I want them to be biodegradable because I like to fill them up with soil and then we water them and when we put this in the ground it just biodegrades. I bought the ones off Amazon last year and I didn't like them because they were miserable. They didn't decompose, they ruined the carrots and they were awful. One year I made the pots out of cardboard and they did really good. So I'm, I'm making them mostly out of cardboard this year. So what I'm doing is uh, this is pretty much caveman technology. I'm just taking a knife and I'm cutting it at the length that I at this width and length of whatever box piece I have and then and then we just roll them up and I've done this different ways before this year I've been using rubber bands and it's been working because rubber bands are cheap and we just roll it around a tin can like that so the size of the pot depends on the size of the tin can so there it is you set it in the tray, you fill it with soil, and and there we go. So there's pot, uh, one pot right there. So I'm going to cut another one. Just roll it up and put the rubber band on it, and there you go. So it's simple, it's easy, and it's fun. It's not a uh, it's not a bad way to go. If there's plastic tape on the cardboard boxes, I take the tape off. Anything that's not going to decompose, I rip it off and throw it away. So, uh, this is a good wintertime project. The pots on Amazon were about 10 cents a piece, and then the roots struggled to go through the fabric. They said they were biodegradable, but they did not biodegrade. So that was a to a guy like me. So I have 2,000 of these to make. And when I first started, I thought it'd take me all winter. But I've only worked on it for five days. Just off and on when I got tired of studying the microscope. When my eyes were tired, I would work on this. And so now, I'm almost done. Every time I fill up a box with these pots, I put the I put it on a paper here. I just tell it put how many are in the box. I had 48 in that box, 120 in that box, 107, and then I add it every time. So I'm at 1,958 pots. So that's good been working I'm trying to work quick with my hands I don't like uh, wasting wasting time and uh, I don't stand up to do this I do sit in a chair so that I can be more efficient so there's that and this one I think I'll just cut that one in half and that'll be about the right length. So there will be those who watch this video who want to know what size to make these. I don't know what size to make them. That's up to you. You need to decide what size you want your pot. First of all, the size of the tin can matters. This is this can was filled with um, hibiscus uh, tea leaves. Hibiscus tea, and uh, you could just use a soup can. You could use a big fat one. You could use a little one. Uh, just depends. That's up to you to choose. Uh, you know, but that may not be helpful. That may not be helpful for the beginner. Gardener, so let me get a tape measure out. 
this pot right here, this can is uh, two and two and two and three quarters inches that way. It's five inches that way. The piece of cardboard I cut, and I didn't measure anything. This is five and a half by a foot, and this pot ended up being four inches that way and about three inches across. So that's a pretty good size. Now there's a hole in the bottom of this pot. So how is the dirt going to stay in? Somebody is going to ask that question because there's a hole in it. Well when you put this in a tray and you put the dirt in and then you put your plant in there, either a transplant or a seed and then it grows for four to six weeks in here. You don't move it and the roots fill it up. When you go to plant it outside you just grab this pot and you twist it on the bottom of the of the tray and you lift it up and then you put it where it goes. So that's one way to to, uh, to have a, a pot. Now if you're making a paper pot this is random scratch paper. This, these are notes from my wife's statistics class she just took. So this is normal eight and a half by eleven paper. And so I went like that and then I pinched in the bottom. Oh, it was it, it broke. Be careful. It breaks. And then I pushed it up in there. And then you can take something that's not sharp because that's dangerous and can cut you. Like a, a hammer handle would be perfect. And then you push that down on the inside. And then you pull the pot. You pull the pot off. And now this one has a bottom. So these ones came from Winco. These were this is just a brown paper bag from Winco. And I did that. So those have a bottom. So there's a couple of different ways of making pots. I felt like the the pot from uh, the cardboard was a sturdier pot. Now there's a trick that some gardeners do if they have cut worms. I didn't push the bottom down on that one because I didn't want to. And I'm not going to do that to these. I'm just going to just like that. If you press the bottom down with a hammer handle, it works a little better. But there's a there's a pretty fun thing about these these pots. If they're made out of cardboard, they last longer and uh, then the paper so the paper is thinner so it decomposes quicker so if you have a cutworm problem there's a thing that gardeners will do they'll plant their tomato plants and pepper plants and then they go out there with a piece of cardboard around each plant and they try to bend this around and put soil around it and the plants coming up out of here and because a cutworm will crawl through the dirt and they bury themselves just a quarter of an inch or half an inch under the soil so you can't really see them but then they and they'll come over they'll wrap around your plant and they'll kill your plant they can cut it off well with a cardboard pot if you have your plant in here and you leave your soil level down an inch and then when you plant it you only plant it up to here so there's an inch poking up above the ground then your cardboard thing is already in place so your cutworm um, little barrier is, is in place that that saves you that little tip right there will save you hundreds of hours of work if you're a tomato gardener and you're out there trying to put cardboard rings around hundreds of tomato plants. Anyway, there we go. So this is how we make the paper pots. And I'm probably getting close to 2,000 right now. Now most of these were cardboard. The only ones I've made out of normal typing paper or printing paper is these that you see right here. 
So that's how you make them, just like that. I'll do another cardboard one so you can see it again. Just roll it up, throw a rubber band on it, and it's done. Okay, we're gonna do one more, one more of these, and then I'll show you. Now I'm gonna show you my pots that I've already made. Okay, so they're all over here. There's all of these boxes. There's one by the window. Right there. And there's all of these in here. All of these boxes. So I have nearly 2,000 already. And if we turn around here, we can look at these trays. This tray right here. Okay, here's a tray. And this is carrot seed that I planted on the 23rd. And these are worm casting soil that went in here. And this is a weed right there. This one's a weed. But these little ones down here are the carrots. And this one, these are carrots. This one's a weed right there. I'll pick him off. So those are carrot seeds that are just coming up. And I'm going to take these pots so we can just pick this whole pot up. Now this one does have the bottom in it. But we can pick this entire pot up and we just drill a hole in the ground with an auger and a normal drill. And I'll just drill holes and I'll set those right in the greenhouse. And there's another tree here. And I made those with newspaper. Newspaper is a thing of the past almost. But we still get newspaper in the sales from grocery stores. So here they are. So there's the little pot right there and it has a bottom on it. So I do like the bottom ones for little things like carrots. Okay, that's how we make pots. This is one of our winter projects that we're doing right now. We've got 2,000 pots ready for uh, our plantings that will go outside in, in June. So this will be watermelons, squash, and other stuff. I don't even know what all I'm doing with it, but I do have a list. I'll probably make another video and go over the list with you.